Hi everyone, I'm JD from Willow Bound Journals. Welcome back to my channel. This is the next video in a series where I'm showing you how I make a vintage sewing themed journal um, from start to finish. And we've already done the cover so far and we've done the pages and arranged them. So now I'm up to the next step, which is um, embellishing. So in this particular video, what I'll be doing is cutting the pockets and um, all the fabric pieces. So I believe in this video I'm doing, yeah, the pockets, flips, flaps, and tabs. So I like doing this kind of all in one. Sometimes I do it as I go page by page, but in this video I'm showing you how I do it in bulk so that I'll have all the pockets and tabs and pieces all ready to go. And then in the next video, I will show you how I lay them out and arrange them. So yeah, in this video, I'm just trimming them down to size getting them all ready and getting enough of them to fill up the journal. So this is a pretty heavily embellished journal. There's going to be quite a lot of pockets, quite a lot of tabs. For the sewing journals, I quite enjoy adding lots of fabric and lace and trim because um, I feel like it fits with the sewing theme. Um, and then what I do in terms of choosing the fabric is I just look at the cover and use that as inspiration. So I know that I could include white and yellow, teals with blues and um, florals because that lady on the right is wearing a teal floral dress. Um, that means I can get to add florals as well to this journal. And I mean, um, even if none of them were wearing flowers, uh, it doesn't mean I wouldn't add flowers, but um, it just helps me to know what kind of fabrics I definitely feel like adding. <laughs> um, this one is more of a greyish blue, so I'm kind of mixing the shades of blue up as well. So I've got like a navy blue, a grey blue, and then later on I'll, you, you'll see that I pull out a light blue fabric. Um, and yeah, so this, this will show you also in this video the different types of pockets that I cut. So some are bottom loading pockets, some are top loading pockets, and some are side loading pockets like these ones here. So these, these are long strips and these ones I love putting on the side of the page. Um, and the side pockets like these, the long ones, are great because you can fit in um, you know, quite large pieces of ephemera. You can include um, cards or postcards or folded pieces of paper. So it's nice having a variety of different types of pockets um, to give different sizes um, and this is me now cutting little fabric squares or pieces for the tabs so what I'm trying to do is for each of the types of fabrics is cut out some pockets with it and also some tabs so that way the journal will have consistency and it will all work together because um, yeah the fabrics will um, go throughout the journal so I'm usually cutting two pockets per fabric type um, and then two tabs per fabric type as well so that way as you're flipping through the journal um, you will see interspersed throughout for that fabric four times if that makes sense um, it's very methodical um, so and I don't put them all at start like if I'm cutting out these two pockets here I will space them out and usually I work symmetrically so if I put this at the front on the first page then I'll put the other pocket of the same fabric at the back on the last page if that makes sense <laughs> um, and that way you know that the um, when you turn the pages you're not going to see the same thing on the next page it'll be a while until you see it but when you do see it you will automatically be called back to the other fabric and know yes this journal that went with that and that went with that and it's all working together <laughs> again um, it doesn't have to be this meth methodical you could definitely just do completely random you could do all different types of fabrics for every pocket you could change up the pattern it really doesn't matter um, I'm just explaining um, how I do it and the thought process that's running through my head as I'm cutting out all these pockets and getting them ready so this is now the white. I wanted to represent the white with the um, lady wearing the white dress on the cover. So this is some white eyelet fabric, I think they call it. Um, and then I've got some blue eyelet fabric. These came from the lovely Tonya. Thank you, Tonya. I love eyelet fabric. It's so pretty and delicate. And I love that it comes in all different colors. So, so pretty. 
that blue fabric is just stunning as well I, I love the color tone of that blue it's a really nice blue um, and I just trimming I'm just trimming up these edges <laughs> trying to make them straight and um, you know some of them are very straight pockets others I do kind of like a diagonal um, others I do like a curved edge so it doesn't matter don't worry too much if your pockets aren't straight um, I also like the rustic look and I also like the added interest of you know the diagonal lines or a curved line so I'm not too fast if it isn't 100% straight um, but I do just want to get rid of these raggedy edges if I was going for you know a more grungier journal um, the raggedy edges might not bother me <laughs> um, I kind of like little pieces sticking out here and there for those kinds of journals so now I think I'm cutting out some tabs with this one so I've got the two large pockets there and then I'm just trimming this down and sometimes I do my tabs um, more rectangle than square um, just so that the tabs also have some variety to them that they're all not exactly the same size or shape um, and some I make longer than others as well so the longer ones when you fold them over the side of the page you get a longer length going onto the page if that makes sense so that adds decoration not just to the side of the page but actually on the page um, so that's why I do you know, a variety of different tab types uh, again you don't need to do that if you want to make them all the same you can definitely do that um, and now I'm just grabbing the blue eyelet fabric and I'm going to cut some pockets um, with these pockets as well I like making them different sizes too so some of them I will make more narrow than others this one here I think I'm doing a more a deeper pocket I think I am I think I'm gonna trim off the bottom I have a feeling this is a while ago that I filmed this video by the way um, so I can't quite remember but I may have trimmed up some of the bottom but yeah um, that's just another idea for you uh, if you're watching and watching for ideas in terms of pockets to add that variety make some narrower um, shallower maybe that's a better word shallow, shallower than others make some deeper um, and that as well helps when you're putting ephemera in there you get different looks because um, obviously in a deeper pocket you can put deeper things in there um, you don't want something small in there well you can but if you put something small in there you can't see it because it gets <laughs> hidden in the pocket um, whereas a shorter um, shallower pocket you can put smaller items in there so that's just something else I'm thinking about and conscious of while I am cutting out or finding my pockets and things like that um, another idea is to do like yeah smaller pockets and you can just add them well anywhere really in the journal middle of the page or to one side of the page at the top or bottom or you could make them side pockets as well really there's so many options with pockets there's just so many ways to do them and um, that gives you lots of the variety and um, I love that interactive element to the journals uh, now we've got some lace here this is vintage lace and it's got this gorgeous gold thread running through it with the white flowers and so this one I think instead of making pockets with it what I'm going to be doing is making oh no no hang on I will be making one pocket but I'm going to be doing a different type of pocket here's another idea a large full-sized page pocket so I tend to like doing that more with the lace because you can see through it um, I don't like covering up all of the page because I figure if you're going to put a page in the journal um, it's there for a reason you want to see it so I don't like the idea of covering up the whole entire page <laughs> where you can't see it um, so I, I feel like the lace at least even though you're covering the whole page you still can see what the base page that you used was in the journal and that's just really really pretty I think it's stunning and as you can see I'm always measuring my pockets um, to the size of the page so that's why I've got my papers here so that I so that I will know um, that I can just place it in the journal take it to my sewing machine and it's ready I don't have to trim it down or anything because I'm measuring everything as I go and then this yeah I'll tr 
sew that around three edges and have that as a side loading pocket of course you could make that a top loading pocket if you want um, I just find it's easier to pull things in and out of a side loading pocket when it's a full size page and then I have some more lace that I've pulled out this is a really pretty one I got this one I believe at an op shop and there's just so much of it um, and yeah it's just a really sweet delicate design with those um, white flowers really really pretty and again um, this was a great one to cover up a page because you can see through it and I think with this one I am doing some flips so I love using my fabrics and laces in all different ways so your pockets your tabs and then your flips and your flaps <laughs> And because it is lace, it isn't very, um, it's not a secret journaling spot, but it does add a bit more coverage, if that makes sense. And then just trimming it up. You could do a full page flip, a full size page flip, or a shorter one, or a narrow one. And I'm just doing maybe like a quarter size of the page. So that's a look at how I cut the pockets. In the next video in the series, I'll show you how I lay them out and arrange them. Hope it's helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. A big special thank you to my patrons who are supporting me this month in November. Thank you for helping me to make my creative dreams come true and allowing me to do this for yet another month. If you would like to join and become a patron and support my channel, bringing light and love to the world through creativity, inspiration and storytelling and also journaling, um, the link will be below in the description box where you get access to videos and printables and at the $10 or higher level you get access to every single one of my digital kits. There's also personal updates and behind the scenes looks into my life and process. If you'd like to take any of my journaling courses, all the links will be in the description box below too. And if you'd like to support my channel through a one-time donation, there's a buy me a coffee option um, if you just want to support my journey that way. May you journal your life because your stories matter.